I can't recall if there was any changes made. Do you ever, ever recall Mr. Despite being accused of giving conflicting chain, testimony, Chuck Gitte's time on the stand is over. For now, only a court order reversing Judge Gomery's decision to keep Gitte out of current proceedings could put him back on the hot seat. Joining us now with more from Ottawa is Chuck Gitte's lawyer, Richard Auger. Good morning to you. Good morning. Can you tell me a little bit about what, I mean, the headlines now are that Galliano and Pelche's lawyers are attacking your client's credibility, saying that there's nothing, no evidence to substantiate his claims. What proof is there that there were liberal officials involved in the decision-making process? Well, I think, first of all, it's, um, it's unfair for those uh, individuals to suggest that uh, there's no uh, paper uh, trail. Um, one important point is that... Uh, there are lists uh, that have been referred to in Mr. Gite's evidence. Uh, in fact, when I uh, examined him yesterday, he confirmed uh, in the documentation before the inquiry that there were lists that set out agencies, set out amounts, set out events, um, and that those lists were taken to Mr. Pelche's office, that those lists were taken to Minister Galliano's office and discussed with them. But was there any proof to say that they, in fact, made the, the ultimate or final decision on where the money went? Well, um, uh, Mr. Gite testified that they contributed to that process, that they um, had input into the selection of those events, uh, the selection of those agencies, and they um, at times wanted a particular event or a particular agency, and at other times um, had no view, and at other times uh, reversed uh, recommendations of Mr. Gite's office. Um, so when you look at the paper that does exist and when you look at Mr. Gite's testimony um, there's certainly some evidence that uh, Justice Gomery can uh, look towards to suggest that there was input that clearly uh, this program was not managed uh, entirely independently by Mr. Gite. But he said in front of the Public Accounts Committee, in fact a note was produced yesterday by Galliano's lawyer, um, about a meeting with, uh, with the Auditor General's office in 2002 in which he said, Chuck Gite said, he had the final word on, on where all this money went. Well, uh, what, what's important in terms of the uh, Public Accounts testimony is that um, is the context of the uh, questions and the answers and it's unfair to isolate um, four or five words from the transcript. And on April 22nd of 2004, uh, Mr. Gite made it abundantly clear, and, and anyone can go to the first 10 pages of the transcript, mm -hmm. he said that um, in terms of the agency selection process, there was no political input. Mm -hmm. And what that, what that meant is, and he clarified it at the inquiry, is that in terms of the creation of the initial list, of agencies that would be used, there was no input. He said that at the Public Accounts Committee. He said that before Justice Gomery. He's been entirely consistent on that. The other element is that at the Public Accounts Committee, he said there was input at the next stage, that is, from the list that was pre-qualified the um, Mr. Galliano and Mr. Pelche did have input in. Once he said they that received the list. Precisely. Okay. So that's the distinction. I think that's what's caused some um, confusion and has led to unfair allegations of Mr. Gite being uh, not credible on that point. Well, and we can also mention that he won't be able to be cross-examined on the testimony that he gave in front of the Public Accounts Committee because of the ruling of Justice of, uh, of Gomery yesterday at the inquiry. But I just want to quickly ask you, um, in the few moments that we have remaining, Mr. Auger, what happens to your client now with regard to the criminal charges? Well, um, I, as everybody knows, he's uh, facing outstanding charges before the Quebec Superior Court. There's now a trial date set for May, and um, he's uh, prosecuted under a direct indictment, which requires that it be a jury trial, mm -hmm. and that's set to proceed in May. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you.